Welcome to the Healthful Woman Podcast. Today is Wednesday, November 25th, 2020. Today is the third podcast in our mini series on breastfeeding and our second podcast with Melissa Kotlin, who is a board certified lactation consultant. On Monday, Melissa and I started our conversation about breastfeeding and lactation consulting. And today we will be discussing breastfeeding myths, misconceptions, and advice. Melissa will review the advice she gives for women planning to breastfeed, but also how she approaches women who might not want to breastfeed. Melissa has a ton of experience and wisdom, and she is a terrific resource. She's also really personable and a lot of fun. I enjoy doing the podcast with her, and I now get to work with her on the labor floor, which is pretty cool. Next week, we will have two more podcasts on breastfeeding. I'll be joined by Dr. Courtney Jung, who is the author of a really interesting book on breastfeeding called Lactivism. Before I go, I wanted to give a few birthday shout outs. First, today's my dad's birthday. My father, Jack Fox, or as we say in Chicago, Jack Fox, probably cares about his birthday less than anyone else I know. And he's also the least likely person to figure out how to actually listen to a podcast. But on the slim chance that mom got one of the Millers to download this podcast for you, dad, happy birthday. I love you. Also, tomorrow, in addition to being Thanksgiving, is my mother-in-law, Marcel Agus's birthday. Mom, thanks so much for indulging me by listening to this podcast and for always being the first one every Monday and Thursday morning to give the podcast a like on Facebook. Happy birthday. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening, everyone. Have a great day and have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday tomorrow. I know this year has been kind of a downer, but I think it also gave all of us a kick in the butt reminder of what is truly important in life and all the gifts and blessings we should be thankful for. Happy Thanksgiving. Welcome to today's episode of Healthful Woman, a podcast designed to explore topics in women's health at all stages of life. I'm your host, Dr. Nathan Fox, an OBGYN and maternal fetal medicine specialist practicing in New York City. At Healthful Woman, I speak with leaders in the field to help you learn more about women's health, pregnancy, and wellness. How do you talk to women if they, they come to you for advice or you're meeting with them and they don't want to breastfeed? Is like, how does that go? Yeah. You know, a conversation, someone says, am I wrong? Am I crazy? Is What do you think? What should I do? How do you approach that? Because I mean, on the one hand, you're there to like, help sure. them breastfeed. But on the other hand, they're saying, I don't, I don't want to do it or I'm not going to do it, whatever it is. I've had a, f- a few different combinations of that. First is the mom who it's few and far between, but the moms who don't want to actually, they want to give breast milk to the baby, but they only want to exclusively pump and right. don't want to put that baby near the breast. Then we just work with that. You know, I have it a few times a right. year, but then there are the moms who call me in and there's sometimes, you know, an interesting dynamic, maybe with the partner, mm-hmm. you can see she's not happy with this, but He's saying, right. or sometimes the mother-in-law right. is sitting right. there. Interesting he, dynamic is such a nice way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so kind. It's an interesting dynamic. <laughs> it's a disaster. It's yeah. awful. <laughs> like God, someone, this family sucks. It's like someone dropped anthrax in the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's, you know, and I always have to sit there and smile. Yeah. Like, oh, no, this is, this is all good. But yeah. get him out of here. Get the mother-in-law who's hovering, right. standing over my shoulder. And I always F. FYI, I always want the family in there. I want right. as many people in there because I want other ears and I yeah. want this to be a family thing versus just the mom and me. Right. So if she's willing to have everybody in there. But sometimes you can tell it is not in her at all. And she's zoning out a little bit while I'm talking. And I just, there are no questions. And I put the baby on. And her, and and her mother-in-law is paying you. <laughs> ex- ex- exactly, exactly. And and the mother-in-law is saying, well, you know, when I breastfed you know, Brad. Yeah. <laughs> right. Name came right. Brad, but, you know, Brad is 45. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I just want you to know I did, the, you know, yeah. okay, okay, okay. This is, you know, yeah. Jennifer. <laughs> right, right. Sometimes if I can get them out of the room or if they are alone, just saying, be straight with me, be honest with me. How are you feeling about this? I don't, I don't know. I just, I don't really want to do this. And I just feel like my husband keeps telling me I have to, you know, my mother keeps giving me the guilt trip that she breastfed my four sisters and me, you know, it's like, okay, but let's work with what you want to do because this is you, this is your baby. Again, what I was saying earlier, this is your happiness. I would million times over have a mom who 
is formula feeding and happy and the whole family, the everything is right. going swimmingly and everyone's smiley and she feels like she can get up off of the couch. She feels like she has a break. She feel like, feels like right. she can go take a shower and she's not falling into a depression. Right. That to me, I have to look at you know their mental right. health too right. and that's a win it, yeah. it is i'm like i just want everybody to be happy here yeah. if breastfeeding is not for you it's not for you yeah and i'm not going to sit here and stress you out i'm not and so do you want to try maybe to pump one time a day would that work for you you know just to be able to you can mix it with the formula if you want and, and a lot of the times the second you lighten that up right. and just say they're like i'd be willing to do that yeah. maybe once and then all of a sudden they call you and they're like i think maybe i can do it twice a day i'm right. thinking maybe morning and evening great okay fine but then if there are the moms that say i hate this right. i hate it it stresses me out i dread every moment and it's not even like putting aside any kind of pain she doesn't have right. an infection she, her nipples are fine everything's fine it's just not in her then forget it let's yeah. hang it up let's yeah. find some other way that you feel like you're going to bond with the baby then right. if this is not it and that's when i sort of become the the friend who had kids you know? yeah, and, I, <laughs> like, and i think when you re, when you change it from a mandate to a choice for women that's that's very it's liberating because yeah. then they're making their they own made choice. Their choice like everything exactly. in life you exactly. know this is you know the you know liberty freedom all these exactly. things that we you know all say that we love it's this is a woman's choice she, exactly she should do what's right for her i think like with all things sometimes people have misconceptions and therefore they're not making like an informed choice and so yeah it's up to us to make sure they understand oh, like you know what are your reasons just so we understand that you know the facts right and fine to make a choice and it happens all the time in, in medicine and what is it you would just want everybody to know like like this is a myth this is a misconception here's the truth here it is here's your chance say whatever you want the first thing is always get the sort of small chested moms mm -hmm. who went from flat to maybe an a cup mm -hmm. <laughs> during their pregnancy they think that they're not going to be able to breastfeed because they're because they're small breasted not true at all all it has to do with the amount of tissue i mean like the actual glandular tissue if they if they've developed something mm -hmm. during their pregnancy then they, most likely they've never had any breast surgeries traumas anything like that which i always ask then they'll be able to produce okay and sometimes i have the mom with the like gazunta huge mm -hmm. boobs that actually are producing less mm, so yeah breast size has nothing to do with with okay. how much you're going to produce that's the first thing the second thing is always about food i get it a lot with baby nurses not baby nurses in the hospital but actual right. baby nurses who are telling their moms what they should not oh, be eating. Oh, don't eat this, do eat this, yeah. don't eat that. Because the baby will taste it. And, yeah. yeah. Or That always sounded a little fishy like to me. Just, I say yeah. eat anything and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. I was like, no, that, that always, I was always, I was always, I was like, I would always be like, really? It's, like, eat anything seriously? and everything that you that want. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Not, not at all. I never, all. you never question anybody who's nursing, like, you know, never. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would be like, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. But I'm like, seriously, the baby knows you have broccoli? Like, I don't think yeah, so. No, <laughs> I've had so, it's, and for some reason, it's, it's always the baby nurses that say, oh, you know, I told her no broccoli, garlic, onions, strawberries, citrus. I've heard it all. I say eat anything and everything. Yeah. That like, and if the baby starts to have a reaction to something, typically it's going to be cow's milk protein. And everybody says dairy. And I'm putting that in quotes because goat and sheep is a very different. Right. It's a different bird. And so. They're actually not birds. Oh, they're, oh, yeah. they're not. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's usually the protein in cow's milk. Okay. That is if a baby's going to have right. some sort of But it's not typical. It, yes, eat what you want. Eat anything and everything. Right. Eat spicy food because yeah. guess what? At six months, those are gonna be the babies who are gonna have a more interesting palate than the ones that moms that cook like I would say like my mom uh -huh. cooks. My my ex husband always says, like, your mom's recipe for chicken was take chicken out of out of package, put in oven, put in oven <laughs> take out of oven, like right. not one take. Like, I mean, my mother will probably end up listening to this being like, you think I cook like that? It's awful. You know, yeah. that and I had like a mom who ate that kind of chicken mm -hmm. with just boiled potatoes for mm -hmm. so long because she was too scared to eat right. anything else. I've had baby nurses say to me, oh, you know, I've told her not to eat this, this and that, because look at the baby's diaper. And I open the baby's diaper and if you, and I see like sort of a green salady looking mm -hmm. poop, that just means that there was more form milk in the prior feeding mm -hmm. than the, we want those yellow mustardy seedy poops, mm -hmm. which means they got to the fat. But if sometimes, you know, the, they only had a little bit of the, like they had more form milk than hind milk, we're going to get that green salady looking poop. And I've, I had one baby nurse who once said to me, 
look, I told her to stop eating salad because look at that. I'm like, how does that work? Well, hold on a second. I just so take one step back. through the milk. Right. This, this didn't come out before. Part of your lactation consultant services is poop inspection. Oh, I love it. I, I'm obsessed. You're like the guy, the, the tour guide who like <laughs> picks up the poop and says, oh, because of this, it was this type of animal, which means that this oh, is this the agriculture and this. You're that. It's the wow. joke. I love poop. Oh. Ever, ever, since my own since my own kids, I'm like, oh my God. There's a lot of information in there. Like, you know, right? but um, <laughs> most people don't want to do it, but that's okay. So like, you're really in there. I you're rolling the up carrots. your sleeves. I'm like, I've got, you know, once they start really eating solids, I'm like, look at that. Amazing. That seed in there. That's great. <laughs> that sesame seed. Um, that's good for the moms in labor. I'm sure they appreciate that. Oh, they, oh, yeah. they do. Sometimes, though. <laughs> like, I'm happy for that N95. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> it's not possible if mm-hmm. you're eating a lot of salad for it to actually right. so, somehow reconstitute. Right. It doesn't in come the out as salad. come out as green again. Like, right. it doesn't make it. So I, that would be magic. Yeah, it, it would be magic. And so, so sometimes they're getting this information from what are supposed to be support people like a right. baby nurse or something like that. And it's just not right <laughs> <laughs> to put it lightly. So one of the, the myths and misconceptions that I hear all the time is always about the food. I always like to just say, you just eat anything, right. everything that you want. This is, this is gold. This is good stuff. That's right. All right. <laughs> 2.5 billion people are going to be better educated now. All right, keep it coming. What else you got? I mean, there's so many. Exercise. Please say it's good. Please it's, say it's good. It's, Please say it's oh, good. I'm a huge fan. Okay. Are you kidding me? I'm a Ooh. marathoner. It's like... Right. Right, other, other, otherwise, Melka would come no, and Malcolm, beat you with no, a baseball bat. No, I know she yeah. was. I, we're on the same page with you. Yeah, yeah. I loved her, her, her whole entire yeah. podcast on exercise. There's been this sort of sad research done, which I, I put that in air yeah. quotes too, about these babies who were rejecting the breast. This was quite a few years ago. I'm probably dating myself, but about how lactic acid builds up when you're breastfeeding. So you should not be exercising and then breastfeeding the baby afterwards because babies were, quote, rejecting the breast. After protest this. the breast. The, ex, ex, <laughs> the only breast after protest. Ex, breast protest, like pushing away. Supposedly, it was, you know, the the research had shown that it was because the mother's of fault the, it, it was the yeah. mother's yeah. fault lactic acid yeah. build up you cannot work out and what follow up research showed was wait hold up it's not about that it's that these moms were going working out running like crazy doing whatever they're doing sweating putting the baby right to the breast too and salty. It's salty too salty and the babies were pushing away right. saying like no so i'm like so this is what you do you take a shower right. and breastfeed the only thing with exercise like i'm more concerned about your hydrations right because that's what's going to dip your sure. supply so you best be taking your you know spy right. belt with your containers on there yeah. and just and drinking and yeah. the exercise is critically important especially yeah. for mental health yeah. and so if they come back like even if the baby's screaming for the breast, the second they walk into the door, at least just wipe wipe right. them down right. so that they're not salty right. and sweaty right. and right. the baby's not like, ugh. Yeah. That's a huge one as well. I probably have some somewhere out there that I have written something about all of these misconceptions and, and the myths, but- Those are good ones. Those are, those are the ones that I hear all the time. A, f- a few other sort of big picture items. If you were to give advice, right? So you're they're not going to meet with you you're just telling them over a podcast. So someone is, she's pregnant, she's you know, expecting, and she's wants to breastfeed. What advice would you give her? I'm going to say right now when she's pregnant, I'm going to ask you the same question right after she delivers and the same question when she goes home for the baby. Stuff that, again, you just think everybody should know before they get into this. Just as far as the preparation, I mean, and the planning, just Anything. like we, preparation, so. planning, if there's something that, you know, like, oh, I wish every mom knew this before she started something like that. Same concept. So, I mean, obviously, you know, while pregnant, a hundred percent take, take some sort of prep class, right? W- whether it's not going to be in person these days, right. but again, online, just read up a lot, prepare yourself, but don't go too wild buying all of these accoutrements. Like, you know, right. buy your boppy pillow or whatever it is. You can hold off on buying a pump. You don't have to do that at first because I always like, I would rather if a mom is breastfeeding and obviously going to go back or not obviously, but going to go back to work or just wants a relief bottle or whatever. I get it that they want the pump, but let's hold out for two weeks, get your breast, your supply established and just know that the baby's latching well and all that. And then around the two week mark, then let's start to introduce maybe one bottle a day or something like that. But they don't need the pump to bring to the hospital. Like I've right. seen this so many times. Right. Like, you don't, maybe if you want to bring the boppy, great, but 
just to be able to prepare just the information before having the baby is, is the best thing. So again, they know everything right. A to Z. They have a few things that they can bring, but don't go wild on all these special things. We can buy them afterwards and Amazon delivers in yeah. one day anyway. Right. The first two days, let's say, you know, they're a day or two in the hospital. What What are things that you would want women to know sort of entering into that situation? Okay. So entering in t- into that situation Yes, you have milk. If you haven't had any breast surgeries, traumas, anything major happened to the breast. And as an aside, as far as surgeries go, I'm not worried about implants, but more so breast reduction surgery because it right. sort of kills a lot of the ducts and takes tissue out. The implants are put in behind the muscle, so right. I'm not really worried about that. The colostrum is enough right. for the baby for the first couple of days. It's, their stomachs are the size of a of a marble. That's all it has to fill. And it's teaspoons worth, but it's very rich and thick and it's filled with all the immunoglobulins and everything that that baby needs for the the best kickstart. I hear too often, like I did last night with my Mm -hmm. patient who was 19 years old, but you know, she tried to breastfeed. I put the baby on. The boyfriend kept saying, no, no, no. She doesn't want this. She doesn't want this. We're just going to get She the, the baby or she the mom? She the baby. Okay. Yeah. She's, she's not going to want this. It's, you don't even have anything. And I tried doing my 10 second long lecture, but nobody was listening. But, you know, just knowing you don't have to fill, you know, a 60 ml right. bottle into, into that baby's stomach right away. And your body produces... It's a sl- issue of supply and demand. So your body is producing as the days go on. So the more this baby is at the breast, the more you're going right. to produce. And all it has to fill is that little tiny marble. By right. On day one, it's marble. Day three, it's the size of a shooter marble. Day 10, we're looking at a ping pong ball. So you're, so yeah. mom's supply, it actually probably will exceed what the baby can actually right. take. But at least it, we're, we're working together to sort of build it together. Right. And that latch, as you said, it, it is the Critical. stimulation. Exactly. It, there's a there's a, a loop where it stimulates the brain to exactly. tell the breast to make milk and also the letdown. So the milk comes out. Exactly. Both of those. And exactly. So, so trying it, even if very little or nothing is coming out, number one, there probably is, and it's enough. Exactly. But number two, you are starting the process. Starting the process. So that's going to work exactly. as you continue forward. Exactly. And that's why also that latch is so critical. So mm-hmm. like if we're talking just the immediate postpartum, that's why having someone there to assess that latch, we want those baby's lips flanged out. We want right. we don't want them gliding onto that nipple because that's not giving any stimulation. They're breastfeeding and they're not nipple feeding. Right. So if they're nipple feeding, you're going to end up with the sore chopped up nipples. If if they're breastfeeding, I don't care what what kind of nipple you have, right. which actually goes to another myth and misconception. Mm. Go back a step. Just I hear so often that oh well, the nurse said I have great nipples for breastfeeding. I'm like I don't even care if they're inverted. Yeah, I wrote in my paper the the the, the nipple question. It, it, yeah, oh, you, see, I, I I didn't even see. <laughs> I didn't was, have my glasses on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even look over the table. Right. You could have a an inverted nipple. Right. And the baby has to get you know, about a half an inch to an inch beyond the nipple. And they're just, they're they are not on the nipple at all. They're right. just sort of creating this teat with the tissue right. and drawing it sort of where the soft and hard palates meet right. really far back. So that's the stimulation. When we let them glide onto the nipple. Right. If they gnaw on the nipple, it's going to be it. painful. Yeah, it, exactly. It's going to be painful. We're not giving any stimulation. And then we end up dealing right. with sore nipples plus milk supply issues. Right. It's critical. Right. And then what about when they go home? So when they go home. I'm going to say that the, the big lesson I got from this is like, don't beat yourself up. You know? No, it's true. Yeah. Don't beat yourself yeah. up. And get help if it's not working. Get help. There's there are so many lactation yeah. consultants wherever you are. You know, if the, if if you go, I know not everybody's in New York or listening. Right. <laughs> it's a lot of New Yorkers. Gonna, a lot there, of New but Yorkers. there are people yeah. all over the world. Again, yeah. 2.5 million people listening yeah. to this. Yeah. You know, if, the, if they go to the ILCA website, ilca.org, there's find a lactation consultant. Mm. You type in your zip code and they're all going to come up. And right. so find a lactation consultant. A lot of them t- do take insurance. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. That they if, participate in, in health insurance. I assume the health insurance is covered. They, they most, probably have mo- to. Yeah, most, I mean, health, yeah. most companies are covering it. And so if, even if, if we don't- political reasons that they'd be like terrified if they didn't, what would happen to them? But this it, isn't it, they cover breast pumps, they cover all this. Why it, wouldn't they cover? Exactly. And it's, great it's less breast ex- pumps. And it's less expensive to cover a lactation consultant than a breast pump. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on the area you live. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they have, and they offer beautiful, great bre- breast pumps. Yeah. Like, I mean, the, the best. And yeah. so I've had clients who have told me that their insurance companies will cover three consultations with a, with a lactation consultant, you know, 
it's a lot like that. It's a lot. And it's three great. hours. It, it, yeah. Or more. Because yeah. it depends on. Yeah. It depends on how they work. It's pretty important. And, right. and again, going back to much earlier, you know, this is when this all comes down back to the support and knowing that you can call someone. So but coming home, there is the whole don't beat yourself up thing. Like, right. Sit down. Take a deep breath. Know that. OK, wait. I can get help and this is going to work out <laughs> right? one way or the other, right. whatever, again, whatever their goals are. Right. Now, let me ask you a question. Who would you recommend enlist the help of a lactation consultant? How would a woman at home or the hospital know I need a lactation consultant to help me? Usually they know that a lot of them that are the sort of hyper successful type A personalities that are not going to not be successful. So they're calling no matter what. Right. Even if everything's going perfectly, they right. just want that check in. They want like a little breastfeeding checkup to say, right. okay, yes, everything's perfect. That's good for you for the, business. Which is yeah. beautiful. <laughs> like no complaints. Right. <laughs> um then right. there then are you those... just get paid to be their friend. It, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Besties, you know. <laughs> <laughs> of course, FaceTime me anytime. Yeah. Right. Um and then and then they send me down to their friends. So right. That's good. Um, but then you have those who even in the hospital, they already know the baby's not opening this mouth wide enough. Their nipples are already sore, they're bleeding, they're, you know, lipstick shaped, whatever the issues are, mm -hmm. they know already that something's off. Right. So within a couple of days, if the latch isn't right and you just know there's something off, that, that's yeah. a new, because obviously not everyone's going to have it correct the first time, the second right. time. But within a couple of days, for many women, it just, it does work out. And if it doesn't, it's really time to call. Yeah. If they, if they're leaving the hospital and still things are like, just it's too painful. They feel like just something's off that, you know, the baby is just crying nonstop, mm -hmm. never content. I mean, the baby could have issues like we could have a tongue tie or lip tie that should be assessed. It's missed a lot of the time. Yeah, I uh, just saw one this morning. Did you see one this just morning? Just this morning. Like absolutely. It was so tight. Was uh, little... Yeah. I mean, I, I was the, the pediatrician was was examining the baby. I was right. in the nursery and she was, oh, look. And I said, I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to look. And she said, yeah, it's just like this morning. And it's, it's... I'm so glad that she actually yeah. caught it. A lot of times they just don't look in the mouth. Like yeah. they'll look to see. The good ones do. Yeah, yeah. The good ones do. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes the, the exams are a little too fast. And right. Sometimes I've had a mom who's, you know, had problems for two weeks. I go to see her. It's like screaming at me. I'm like, why did nobody pick How this up? How much you want to just fix that yourself? I do. I just want to, I just want just to do a little, little snip. I do. You're, you're, you're like, I saw them do this. Like, you don't need a medical <laughs> degree to nothing. do that. But now they're laser. Now they laser. They're oh, yeah. Snip well, they do that. Anymore. Yeah, they do that so that you don't do it. Uh, exactly. I have a laser. With my, with my right. dirty Kelly's yeah. that I carry around. Right. It's probably me. better for the baby in the long run. <laughs> it's, um, no, but it's interesting because I think a, a lot of, you know, women may not know, like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm going into this. I'm, I'm planning to breastfeed. I don't expect it to be a breeze. I expect there to be, you know, some, you know, learning curve. At what point is this not normal, right? At what point is, am I beyond the learning curve? And I'm just sort of, I'm setting up for a situation that's going to fail because it hasn't worked out yet. And so it, if that point is sort of when I'm going home, if it's still not basically going okay, that's a good time. And I think number one, it's just a good, easy to remember benchmark. Like, all right, I'm on my way home. Number two, logistically, that's when you're going and there's no one there necessarily to help you anymore. You're not in the hospital. It's the right. situation's different. And so if it's not going to get worked out while you're in the hospital, there is a real chance it won't get worked out when you get home. So that seems like a, a reasonable time to start, you know, calling and help. The, the stress hits when they get home, yeah. for sure. And I think there is sort of this odd sense of security when they're in the hospital because there there are so many people who technically should be right. able to help. But the second there's like this little bit of this panic of wait a minute, I'm on my own. Oh my God, wait, I can't just ring a bell, mm -hmm. <laughs> like call a bell or, you know, nobody's just going to come in to help me. I can't put myself on a lactation list. You know, there's, right, there's, right. there's that moment. Can I leave the baby in the nursery tonight? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And now, of course, we're going to have the nursery open. What's that? What's that? Like, what, no, I mean, at home, like what's that, our kitchen? Like, like, what? No, I don't. We don't have, we don't have nursery at home. Sorry. Yeah. It's like going up there in the room with me all night. Yeah. And, yeah there's no other hands. And, and so I think that that's usually when most of them, it hits them a little bit earlier rather than later. We have moms with very high pain tolerance. They might think that's normal for a while. I always say like the the initial latch, for example, where the first week to 10 days, that initial latch for that first seven to 10 seconds was like, Ugh! yeah, oh, wait, OK, it's better. But if it continues, let's say it's going on for minutes and they're not getting any relief and they have a high t pain tolerance, they might think that that's just how it's supposed to be. 
And it's not. Breastfeeding is not supposed to be painful. Right. But again, I go back to my longstanding you know, recommendation of just having that prenatal breastfeeding class right. so that you know that that's not normal. Right. And you know, OK, wait, I remember this was said. I need. My partner took, took copious notes. <laughs> exactly. Page 12. Now, where are they? Yeah. <laughs> Page 12 says, this isn't supposed to hurt. This you wrote that down. You wrote it down. We were, we were stern about that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then just so uh, also women understand for their expectations. So. They come home, they realize this isn't going well, and they do, you know, call on a lactation consultant to come. How long does it typically take for you to, quote unquote, fix what's going on? Is it 10 minutes, like you said, because you know right away? Or is it two sessions? Or is it three weeks? Like, what should they expect sure. when someone comes that it'll sort of start improving sure. for them? With the, the technical or clinical mm -hmm. issues, the latch issues, for example, it's usually why we're called. Or again, you know, a checkup, but right. still includes checking the latch. That is usually, it's one session. Right. I mean, I will sit there for an hour and a half watching the entire feeding top to bottom. I mean, and that's undressing them. They pooped in the middle. You know, again, my favorite thing. Right. They, um, they the baby. What's that? They the baby. No, the mom. I, I go and wipe her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your poop is great right now. You are you're, a labor nurse. Here. So that that is a possibility. <laughs> I'm a little obsessed with yeah. poop. You know, like... <laughs> It is a possibility. Yeah. <laughs> usually, like the average session will be about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And usually we've gone through everything. I've watched the feeding. I've corrected what needs to be corrected. I've assessed the baby, assessed mom. Few and far between have I had to go to a second or third time. Maybe right. maybe once or twice in my entire right. 17 years That's have great. I gone to see somebody three times. Usually it's the one time. It's very comprehensive. But then they get... Yeah, they get to the, call ongo me. the ongoing, the ongoing stuff is the stuff. Right. Is mean, that is that typical? Do most lactation consultants do that? Or is that atypical? What's what's your sense out there? I think it's atypical. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm I'm weird, you know. I, no, like, I, but it's I, just, like, I listen. You can understand it's it's a totally different way to, to yeah. engage with people. It's harder. Yeah. And so, but okay. So I know a lot. Like I I mine. Is, you know, I just charge one flat fee. This is what you get for right. for again the entire time this baby's breastfeeding. A lot of others, I think, do it by session. A lot. I've had phone calls of a lot that have called me after they've been with somebody else because a friend recommended it after they had not right. known about it the first time and are thrilled when they know that they can call me at any point. Right. And so it sort of is, it's all about the relationship too right. and the trust and the support. And so it's hard if they're having clinical technical issues, you need to go back. Right. But usually once all of that is fixed, in that first session, all the follow-up issues, they sort of come later. Oh, I'm starting to, I'm feeling this little ball in my breast and right, I think right. it's a plug. That, like that's the kind of stuff right. I, I actually don't need to go and see you again. I can tell you exactly what to right. do right now. Right. I try not to clink dishes while I'm while I'm doing it. Like, yeah. My kids can answer a lot of the questions at this point. They're my, like- My my son is, is always like, is like, ask her how far apart the contractions are. You know? <laughs> What's the duration, the frequency? <laughs> yeah, and, and he'll, be, he'll be like, oh, there's no way she's in labor. No, I, no, I heard that call. Yeah. <laughs> latent. No, they have that. It's, it's um, but I think it's also reassuring for people that it's not like going to therapy where you're like, I know I'm signing up for twice a week for six years before we even like scratch the surface of my problems, right? <laughs> exactly. This is like, it, it's it's going to work. Uh, and you know, yeah. if, if it never works, then fine. Maybe it's not right for you. But for just about everybody, yeah. the, the things that are going wrong will get corrected very quickly. I think that's encouraging that they're not signing up again for weekly lactation consultant sessions for the next year. It's hey, one, two, I don't know, something in that range. That's amazing. And all, all the people who maybe are finding difficulty doing it and they really want to do it, that this is a way that, you know, one thing and they can they can do it. It'll yeah, help them. Yeah, yeah. That must be very satisfying for you. One of the other nurses who's pregnant on the unit last night, I have like my initials on my my fleece. Mm -hmm. She was like, you're a lactation consultant? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, th I thought, I, thought, I yeah. kind of always think everybody knows that for some yeah. reason. She's like, oh, I'm going to have to keep you in mind, you know, soon enough. I'm like, you're going to be fine. But yeah. She's like, do you still see private clients even 
working full time, I'm like, yeah, my day's off. I, you know, yeah. after my morning nap, I'll, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, my day's off, I'll go and see them because it is such a satisfying part of my life. And it's such, I don't want to say it's a routine part of my life, but it has been the majority. It's my, it has been my career up until now. Part of your, your identity in a sense. It it's who it you is, are. It is. And when we were talking much earlier in the very beginning, when you were asking about my background, I actually left out the part after I had become a lactation consultant. I don't want to ever say it became a little bit easy, but I'm always one that has to keep my brain working. And part of the reason why I ended up where I am now as an RN mm -hmm. on l and I actually had gone back to get my master's in midwifery in 2011. And then life happens. And in the middle of my birth clinicals, I ended up getting divorced. My kids were younger at the time. I had no one there, even though my, my ex lived a minute away from me. He sleeps through his phone, mm -hmm. 2, 2 a.m. called, like just wasn't work. Like it was just very, right. very hard. So I ended up having to withdraw sort of at the bitter end. So where my, my path was supposed to be like, oh, I'm crossing over from lactation. I love women's health so much. I'm going to do midwifery. Uh -huh. And then boom, that ends. Fast forward to my kids being older. They're basically out of the house. It was actually my, my ex-husband's wife who said to me, I think you should go back. You, you love the whole labor and delivery. Midwifery would be tough anyway, just to go back to. If you went back to nursing school, got your BSN, got your RN, you know, yeah. got your RN license and went back to labor and delivery, you, you'll have regular hours, you'll have shift shifts. And I'm like, this is, this is true. It, it all. So everything sort of wraps up. Like women's health is the only world that I've ever been right, in. And I, right. I've been obsessed by it since I was, you know, probably six years old. My aunt had all these pregnancy and birth books when she had my cousins. And mm -hmm. I used to sneak to the room and just like read through these books. Right. And I was always fascinated by it. My mom made me in 1976, the, the show, um, I was six years old. Um, it was like an after school. My mom's having a baby. Uh -huh. I don't know. <laughs> it okay. was on. And it was, I was like fascinated with it then. And I, right. so everything like, I should have known way back then right. that this was sort of where I would end up. Right. For our younger listeners, by the way, books are those things with pages get, on them that are on shelves. Yeah, they have these little... <laughs> yeah, but you can Google it what a book is and it'll it'll show you a picture and, you know, maybe you it, can see a video. Sometimes it's yeah. hard. Sometimes yeah. it's soft. I yeah. mean, you know, it's like, you know, you flip through pages and right. not click on something. Right. Yeah. Everything sort of comes together and sort of makes sense in that world. But I love L&D, but I will never, ever give up the lactation because it's just, it, it, is a, it is part of my identity. It's part of who, you know, where my whole entire career began and it's not ending anytime soon. So it's amazing. Here I am. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Melissa, thank you so much thank for coming you so on. That was, much for that was amazing. So this is fun. great. And I think that so helpful. There obviously so many women are thinking about this either in the past, their own experiences, or in the future, what it's going to be like, or even in the present, you know, they're pregnant, they had a baby. And I think just to know that there's options and there's help and there's ways, you know, to help women breastfeed. And like we said, it's not for everyone, but if it's something that someone wants to do and is choosing to do it, they should have all the available help. And for most women, they're going to be able to do it. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that's fantastic. So thank you again for coming God, on. We're going to have you again. Oh my God, I would love to come back because I have diarrhea of the yeah. mouth. So. <laughs> There you go. Always go back to the, the poop. poop. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Thank right. you again for having me. Thank you for listening to the Healthful Woman Podcast. To learn more about our podcast, please visit our website at www.healthfulwoman.com. That's H-E-A-L-T-H-F-U-L-W-O-M-A-N.com. If you have any questions about this podcast or any other topic you would like us to address, please feel free to email us at hw at healthfulwoman.com. Have a great day. The information discussed in Healthful Woman is intended for educational uses only. It does not replace medical care from your physician. Healthful Woman is meant to expand your knowledge of women's health and does not replace ongoing care from your regular physician or gynecologist. We encourage you to speak with your doctor about specific diagnoses and treatment options for an effective treatment plan.